Hi, so exponential growth and decay exists in nature. When you look at things like population, uh, radioactivity, uh, radioactive decay, uh, bacterial growth, and even with the coronavirus, uh, you'll see exponential growth. So let's take a closer look and make some sense of exponential growth and decay. So let's get into exponential growth and decay. So we're going to take a look at the graphs of exponential growth and decay, but then we're also going to really break down and make sense of the equations for exponential growth and decay and really understand the pieces of that and how to use that to calculate a problem that involves exponential growth and decay. So let's take a look. So an example of exponential growth would be something like so we're starting with 50 and we keep doubling each time. So that would look like something like this. 50 goes to 100, doubles to 200, doubles to 400. And I notice what I put here for, why did I start with zero? Well, I'm writing up on the top, this is the number of times that it's doubled. So it, this is just our starting point. And here it's doubled one time to 100. Here it's doubled two times to 200. So what would the graph of that look like? The graph would start at 50. And then it goes up, but at an increasing pace. So it goes up a little bit, then more, then more. And so an exponential growth pattern is going to look something like this shape here, where it really, after a while, really starts to take off. And what about the equation for this example? So let's take a look at and see how we got to here. So we started with 50, and we multiplied by 2, we multiplied by 2, multiplied by 2 each time. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times we multiplied by 2. So if we're going to look at how we got to 1600, we did 50 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Well this, another way of writing this, is 2 to the 5th power. So 50 times 2 to the 5th power. But more generically, if we did that for 4, we would have only multiplied by 2 4 times. So this is going to be 50, which is our starting point, times 2 to the x power, x being the number of times that we double. Now let's take a look at exponential decay. So an example of exponential decay is we're starting with a number like 2400, but instead of doubling, we're cutting it in half each time. So the data would look like this. We go from 2400 to 1200 to 600 to 300 and keep cutting it in half. The graph of that would start up here at 2400 and it would increase it would decrease more in the beginning and less and less and less. And then actually as we go, go on it gets closer and closer to zero but never hits zero. So what about the equation for exponential decay? So here, we're dividing by 2 each time. So another way of writing that is we're multiplying by 1 half each time. So we're starting with 2400, and we're multiplying by half however many times that we do. So if we get to here, 1, 2, 3 times we're multiplying it. So we're multiplying it by half x number of times. So what if we changed it to a percentage? So what if we increased by 40%? So here's how it would change the numbers. And the graph, rather than doubling, it's only 40%. So the graph just gets um, shorter. But how would we set up the equation for this? So how do we, what's the change of each one for increasing by 40%? So we're taking 50. And if we add 40%, we're taking 40% times 50, but then we're adding the 50 back in. So to get from here to here, 40%, but we have to put 1 plus 40% because we have to add the 50 back in. If we just multiplied by 40%, we would get a number smaller than 50. So we have to add 1 to the 40%. So for this particular equation, we would start with 50. And then each time we're multiplying by 1.4. And however many times that we do that. 
So notice when we have exponential growth, we have a number that's bigger than 1. Because that way, the number's going to go up. If we had a number smaller than 1, the number would go down each time. And what about exponential decay? Let's say we're decreasing by 40% each time. So there, how do we get from 1 to the next? So here, if we're decreasing by 40%, then that's the same as multiplying by 60%. Or 1 minus 40%. Right, so we get, um, we have to convert it to the amount that we have, not the amount that we're losing. So the equation here, 2,400 is our starting point, and each time we would not need to multiply it by 0.6, however many times that we do it. And notice here, exponential decay, we have a number that is less than one. So for a general equation for this. We've got y equals a times 1 plus r to the x. a is where we start. r is our rate, like 20% increase, 40% increase. We're adding 1 to it because we want to increase. So we have to keep the original, which is where the 1 comes in. And this is the number of times the number of times that we're doing it. Exponential decay, same exact equation, except you've got a minus. So your starting point here, you get one minus the rate, and again, this is the number of times. So it's, this what we put in here is important. So if we had a um, increase of 10%, 10% is the same as 0.1, so we would use, in here, we would use 1 plus 0.1 or 1.1. Whereas if we had a decay of 10%, we would go 1 minus 0.1 or we'd, we'd use 0.9 if we had a 10% exponential decay. So let's take a look at three different examples of using these equations for exponential growth and exponential decay. Okay, so the first one, let's say we have a population of our town, which is approximately 70,000. The population is growing at a rate of 2.4% each year. That right there tells us that it's going to be exponential growth because it's growing per year, 2.4% per year, and we're going to do it for 10 years. So this is exponential growth, so let's take the exponential growth equation. Starting point, 70,000. 1 plus the rate, so if we're increasing by 2.4%, 2.4% as a decimal, we're going to move it over two places. So as a decimal, that's 0 0.024. And then 1 plus 0 0.024 is what we're going to use in here. So 1.024. We're doing it for 10 years, so let's take it to the 10th power. So 1.024 to the 10th power is going to get us 1.2. 2677. Multiply that by 70,000. And this gets us 88,739. Okay, in our second problem, we've got a car that's selling for $30,000. The value of the car decreases by 15% each year. Again, that tells us right there that we're dealing with exponential decay, that it's decreasing by 15% each year. What will be the value after six years? So we want to use the exponential decay equation. So $30,000. Now, one minus the rate. So we've got a decrease of 15% each year. So a 15% decrease. 
it's going to be 0.15. So 1 minus 0.15 is going to get us 0.85. Or in other words, we have 85% left each time is another way to look at it. So we're going to go 1 minus the 0.15 and get 0.85 here. And then we're doing it for 6 times, so we get 6. So 0.85 to the 6 is going to get us 0.3. 7715 multiply that by 30,000 and we get 11,315. Right, so that's exponential decay. Let's take another look at exponential growth. We're investing a thousand dollars gaining 11% per year. That right there tells us the exponential growth. And we're going to do it between the ages of 20 and 65. So let's use our equation for exponential growth. So our starting point here is going to be a thousand. One plus r. So our rate is 11 percent which is 0.11. So we're going to use one plus 0.11 or 1.11 here. And how many years are we going to do it for? So in between the years of 20 and 65, there's going to be 45 years. So we're going to do that for 45 years. Okay, so now let's evaluate. 1.11 to the 45th is going to be 109.53. If we multiply that times 1,000, we get $109,530 for investing $1,000 and letting it sit and accumulate for 45 years. Thanks for watching. If you have any comments on this video or suggestions for future videos, just comment below. Uh, if you'd like to subscribe, you can do so right over here. And I've got another suggestion for you to watch right here. Thank you and come back again soon.